Patty. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, it's nice to see. I've actually seen some familiar names in that list. So it's nice to know that there's a few people I've met before and chatted to you before who are hopping along to today's session. So welcome. Um, yeah, my name is Emily. Really happy to be here. Part of my job at Wage Dream is to do research about how the Wage Dream app impacts people. And flexible pay is the feature that we're kind of best known for. So I spend a lot of my time focusing on that. So I wanted to just take a little bit of time today take, um, talking to you about some of the ways that people use flexible pay. Um, some of you on this uh, webinar might use it already yourselves, um, and maybe you can pop some ideas in the chat if I miss anything about the way that you use flexible pay. Um, but we'll kind of go through some of the basics and get into some of the different use cases and then have time at the end for questions. So Hadi, do you want to take me to the next slide, please? So firstly, kind of what, what is it? What is flexible pay? So it's one of the features in WageStream um, and it lets you decide kind of when and how much you'd like to be paid. You can only be paid for work you've already done. So it's not about getting paid in advance. It's about if you've worked a shift or done your usual hours, um, you can choose to be paid for some of that some of that work that your employer owes you for. So at WageStream, in the WageStream app, we call flexible pay stream. Um, and you can always find it kind of from the middle button on the bottom of your app, the stream, the WageStream homepage. And when you come to the stream page, you'll see sort of an image that looks like the one on your screen. Um, and you'll kind of see the last few digits of your bank accounts. You know where the money is going if you choose to use flexible pay. Um, and you'll also see how much is available. So how much pay um, have you earned so far this month that is available for you to get paid flexibly? So you can't access 100% of your pay using flexible pay. You can usually access just a portion of that. And the, that portion varies depending on the settings that your employer has set up for you in the app or actually your own settings that you've chosen. And so if you want to use flexible pay, kind of the mechanics of doing that would be just to drag that slider along, choose the amount you want to be paid right now um, and hit confirm. And it happens almost instantly. So the pay gets transferred straight away to your main bank account that you get paid into. Um, I do have to let, say that sometimes because of banking system delays, um, that payment can take up to two hours to arrive. But in the majority of cases, it, it's there instantly. So within a couple of seconds, it's in your main bank account. So that's kind of the basics of what it is and how to use it. Um, Hadi, take me to the next one, please. So I wanted to spend, I mean, we don't really need a slide for this, but I wanted to spend most of my time today talking about kind of the different ways that people use flexible pay and how that might fit into their financial toolkit. Um, and toolkit is a word I use a lot. And I guess the first thing to say is for some people, flexible pay doesn't fit into their financial toolkit. Some people are very happy to be paid on their usual payday and to get kind of all of their pay in one go, and they are used to managing their budget and living their lives in that kind of really cyclical way, whether it's monthly or every four weeks or every two weeks or, or even weekly. So for a lot of people, they've actually already developed a toolkit around managing their money. And for them, flexible pay doesn't fit in. Um, but for many people, particularly if you work um, where your hours vary, so the amount you get paid fluctuates kind of paycheck to paycheck, there's lots of really interesting ways that you can use flexible pay. So one of the ones that we hear the most frequently and see the most often when we speak to people um, is paying bills on time. And so for many people, because of the frequency that they get paid, so you might work um, in a company that pays you every four weeks, your payday shifts every month but your bills don't. Your bills come out on the same day, but your payday keeps moving. And so just being able to use flexible pay to take some of the pay you've, you've already earned and pay bills on time um, means that you can kind of maintain or improve your credit score and also hopefully avoid late fees. So hopefully not have to pay any fees for kind of missed, for missed payments. So that's one of the most frequent use cases we hear. Um, Another really common reason why people use flexible pay is they use it as a really deliberate budgeting technique. So people say, I look at how much I've earned and I know I can only spend a portion of that using flexible pay. So this for me means that I know I'm living within my means. So I know I'm not gonna overspend. And actually what I'll do is I will stop using other products that don't have that feature. So I'll stop using things like an overdraft or a credit card and I'll use flexible pay as the main way that I pay for things. So it becomes a payment mechanism, but also a budgeting tool. 
And we hear from people who use flexible pay in this way that they find it works you know, really well for them in terms of staying on top of their finances, making sure that they can't overspend, making sure that they're not going into debt um, by sort of inadvertently spending too much. Uh, and the nice thing with flexible pay is because it's not a credit card or it's not an overdraft, there's no repayment date. It's just, it's pay you've already received. And on payday, I mean, you don't get it twice, so, but, but you also don't have to pay it back. So it's sort of, it's just instantly reconciled. Um, and then, so sort of that kind of regular usage instead of a, instead of a credit card or an overdraft is a, is a really common use case. And over 20% of people who use flexible pay say that's the way that they use it. So they use it as their kind of everyday payment mechanism, both as a sort of a payment tool, but also as a, as a budgeting uh, technique. And then we also hear that, again, around a fifth of people slightly higher, use flexible pay to get to work so that they can work more. And it depends I guess how you're getting to work and what the cost of getting to work is. Um, I ride my bicycle to work, so it's mostly free until I need to do some maintenance, like fix a flat or, or take my bike into the shop. But if you're taking the bus to work or if you are taking public other public transport or driving, and particularly for individuals that work in a community where they drive. So if you are, um, for example, an at-home care worker where you're having to drive to see different clients and, and doing work there, being able to put petrol in your car, so having the money to put petrol in your car to get to work so you can pick up an extra shift becomes a really valuable part of how flexible pay fits into some people's lives. So it just means that the cost of going to work is sort of experienced as you're doing that rather than having that cost all at the end of the pay cycle. And for some people, um, when money is quite tight, being able to work more hours without waiting until payday means they can actually sort of boost their earnings a little bit. Um, other reasons why people use flexible pay, again, it depends on um, who you work for and whether the job that you have wage stream with is your main job or maybe a side job. So we hear from a lot of people where this is their second job. And so actually flexible pay for them becomes their fun money. They're kind of going, well, this is my second job. I have a different job to pay my bills, but the job I track on the wage stream app, um, actually, this is what I use, you know, for going out or for treats or for gifts or for booking a holiday. So I'm going to use flexible pay in a really ad hoc way. And I'll, I'll pick up a shift and do the work and then spend the money because that's, that's how I want to use this particular pot of money. And we hear the same for overtime. So people who are, um, picking up overtime shifts because there's something that they want to spend that money on. So, you know, I don't, no one really wants to work overtime, but I'm, I'm going to pick up an overtime shift because actually I'm going to, I'm going to treat my family this weekend and we're gonna have a really nice family day out. So I will do the shift that I don't, I don't feel like doing today, but then I'll get access to that money straight away. So I can have a really nice family day and kind of spend it in that way. Um, and then Similar, similarly, uh, we understand, and I speak to a lot of people who use flexible pay to buy things when they're on sale. So, and particularly sort of big ticket items, like if you're booking a holiday or if you're buying something, maybe you needed to replace an appliance or you've been waiting and kind of watching the price for something. And when that sale is quite significant, so you can save, you know, 50, 100, 200 pounds on the cost of an item or the cost of a holiday, having access to your pay and being able to use it right when you need it is something that um, we know a lot of people do. And then they will sort of reconcile that over a number of pay periods. And then there's a couple of others maybe you haven't thought about. So one is some people actually use flexible pay to build up their savings. So when you're using the, um, the stream feature, you can also open a savings pot or a build pot as we, as we now call it. Um, and you can set a rule that says every time I use flexible pay, I actually want to pop sort of two pounds in my savings or five pounds or 10 pounds in my savings. So you can kind of go, well, when, I, when I'm using flexible pay to pay for something, I'm also going to take that opportunity to, to carve some money off to the side and actually build up that pot so that I do have some savings in a few months time or towards the end of the year, I've actually built up a nice fund that I can use for whatever I feel like using. Um, and then finally, one of the most common reasons um, for people who work variable hours. So we know that across all wage stream members, there's quite a substantial variation in the hours that people work. Um, and some months 
it's enough hours and you can kind of meet all your obligations and pay all your usual bills and some months it's not enough hours and so for many people actually flexible pay helps just even though the hours are lumpy and the paycheck is slightly lumpy flexible pay means that people can um, sort of tap into their earnings and smooth that out so even if the the, the way they've accrued those earnings is slightly lumpy they can kind of smoothly access their pay over that over that period um, so that they can continue to do the basics pay bills buy groceries uh, you know get to work um, have a night out if having a night out is part of part of your plan and part of your budget um, and then the last one I'll talk about is probably the one that um, everybody instinctively thinks about which is the emergency expense so something happened and you needed to um, pay to fix something. And the example we always use is like your car breaks down and you need your car to get to work. You need to pay to fix that. And so some people will use flexible pay kind of in the moment to access those funds and pay for the car breakdown. Um, and then again, take a few pay periods to kind of cycle through that. And sort of, again, once, once that sort of emergency expense is dealt with, go back to their usual budgeting techniques. So those are a few ideas. I'm sure there's more there that people have kind of thought about, particularly if you're starting a job and it's, it's a new job and you haven't been paid in a while, just having access to some of that pay. Um, or if you've got um, debt elsewhere that's actually costing you a lot of money, some people might choose to swap out some of that debt. So pay down that debt more quickly and save on save on interest payments. But yeah, Hattie, I could talk about this all day, but I think it would be maybe good to hop on to some of the some of the other slides so we can kind of cover the rest of it and then we'll see if people have questions in the in the chat yeah perfect i see a lot of hands going up and some questions coming in so just a reminder you can use the q a button to drop all your questions in and we'll get to them yeah. at the end and so yeah what what isn't flexible pay so this is important too um it's not a loan so it's not about borrowing money that you haven't earned you have to have earned it in order to access your pay so if you've only worked one day out of the month there'll only be one day's worth of pay that you can get access to using flexible pay um, and it's also not extra money so um, if you've you know access some of your pay using flexible pay um, in the middle of the month and then payday comes you don't get paid twice so the pay you've already received You've, you've had that pay and then any other pay that you haven't yet received that will come through to you on payday um, and because it's not a loan and, and it's not extra money there isn't any interest on it so it doesn't matter kind of how much um, you've used or how long you've how long sort of sits between using flexible pay and payday none of those none of those things factor in and actually that leads us on to our next um, point which is do I have to pay for flexible pay and so um the short answer is yes but there's a really long answer that sits behind this too so yes there's a flat fee to use flexible pay um and actually you can see what that fee is in the app so when you go to the stream stream page before you use flexible pay and actually while you're using it it will show in the app if there's a fee and how much that will be some employers will cover this fee entirely. So if you work for an employer who fully funds that fee, you, you won't see anything. So if you're not seeing a fee, there isn't a fee. Um, and some employers will pay part of the cost of the fee. So the, the amount of the fee you see might be different to the amount of the fee that somebody else sees because that employer has absorbed some of that cost on your behalf. Um, and some employers will do things like um, offer sort of one or two or three uses of flexible pay that they'll cover and then kind of any more you need to cover and so one of the reasons that some employers do this is to enable people to have a weekly pay cycle so they'll kind of say well we'll run payroll monthly but if you want to pay yourself weekly we will cover as an employer for example um three free uses of flexible pay so you can use it on week one week two week three and then week four is payday um, so it's a real mix and you do need to go into the app to see what the fee will be um yeah sort of like i said if you're not seeing a fee in there that's because your employer is covering it they're covering all the sum of it and depending on what you see um that will be the amount it costs you each time to use flexible pay the fee doesn't vary for you so each time you use flexible pay it's the same amount um and then if you do choose to use flexible pay and there is a fee to pay on payday that fee comes out of your pay so you don't have to actively pay it it comes out automatically on your pay and payday and then 
I think that's I think that's enough to say about the fee. It ranges, like I said, it ranges for people. Probably the the um the amount the amount that you need to know about will be there in the app. And the maximum fee, um, Hadi, correct me if I'm wrong, is sort of 195. So that's the actual price of the fee. And then what you see depends on how much your employer covers of that. And finally, I kind of wanted to get into the last thing, which is, you know, what if I'm worried about using flexible pay? And I guess the first thing to say about that, and so that's just on the next slide, please, Hadi. First thing to say about that is you don't have to use flexible pay. So if you're worried about using flexible pay, you don't have to use it. And in fact, you should only use it if you think it's a helpful tool to you or the way that some of the ways I've described using it, you think actually that might work for me. Um, if you do want to use it, you can set your own rules for how you'd like to use it. So within the app, you can go, if you click on your the picture of your um, of your name, you might even have uploaded a picture in, in there. This will take you through to the stream settings um, and you can set your own controls. So you can set rules for how you want to use flexible pay and you can choose things like how much you want to be able to access, so what the maximum is, how many times you want to be able to use it um, in a pay period. Um, you can choose what percentage of your pay you want to be able to access. So again, you can set maximums there. And you can also do things like you can choose um, kind of days and times when you don't want to have it switched on. So you can switch it off for particular days and times. So you can say, for example, if you know that, I don't know, you finish work late on a Wednesday and you get home and you're feeling bored, um, and one of the things that you do when you're feeling bored is go online and buy shoes. Um, you can actually say, I don't want to be able to use it on a Wednesday night because I, I know I'll regret that choice later. So I'm going to make Wednesday, I'm going to switch it off on a Wednesday evening so that I'll do something else when I'm bored. Um, and you can also lock those settings so that you can't adjust them for kind of anywhere between one and 30 days. So you can build a really, a really kind of comprehensive rule set around flexible pay to design it to work for you. Um, if you have other worries about using it, there's, look, there's always support available in our help center. Um, we have a really hardworking support team who work around the clock to kind of um, build articles, but also chat to you in the app and, and help you. Some people will work for an employer that has a live coach feature. So you'll see it in the app if you have live coach available to you, where you can speak to kind of a trained money expert in one-to-one -one chat. But even so, even if, even if not, you can also access lots of money articles in the app. Um, and kind of other tools around your money. Um, so things like a benefits calculator we have in, in the app, which is really comprehensive. And actually, if you do nothing else after today, go, go and, and check out our benefits calculator because it will tell you if you're entitled to any state benefits. And there's some things you may not have known about before, like um, getting access to um, social tariffs on things like your broadband or your water, so cheaper rates. So if you get, if you get access to one one bit of the state benefit system. There's lots of other services that become much cheaper for you and you may be able to get some really decent money savings. Um, and there's also connections to a debt advice charity in there if you've got some questions about sort of broader debt or broader money worries. So there's, there's lots of support in there to help you with flexible pay, but I think kind of coming back to it, you don't have to use it. If it's, if it's part of your financial toolkit and you want to use it, that's great. If you don't want to use it, that's fine too. And if you feel like you would appreciate the support of building your own rule set around flexible pay, absolutely do that. So around 20% of wage stream members already do that. They already use those settings to build a really comprehensive um, toolkit of controls. And again, we're always here to chat too. So I'm going to pause there and let Hattie play a video from a few of our members who use flexible pay regularly, and then we'll turn to your questions. Perfect. Thanks, Emily. So hoping everyone can hear this. This is a video of some of our members. Financial stress can leave you worrying about where your next pound that you might need is coming from. people struggle to get through from week one to week four. I was between jobs, so I hadn't been paid for like two months. And then I started loads this time, they told me about wage stream. There's been many times where I've had to stream before I've started work because I've realised I can't actually um, afford to get there. 
It's a way of keeping on top of everything to make sure everything is covered on a weekly basis without having a shortfall, say in week three of the month. It's really helped me in my time of need. For me, it has made me more financially responsible. You're not borrowing from a third party. You're not getting yourself into debt. It's money you've already earned. <laughs> You're going to edit all of this, isn't you? Yes. yes. I'm all that. <laughs> right. When you're ready. <laughs>
but they've said would it ever go up the the cap and maybe you could just talk a bit about that yeah so every every employer sets some thresholds around flexible pay usage um, and they tend to range between 20% to 50%. We've had some employers go, go higher than 50%. That's just something where it would be helpful if you've, if you've got 30% as a threshold um, and you're finding that that's not sufficient, just drop a note into our support team so that we have that information and we will aggregate all that data. And then we'll, one of our account managers will take that back to your employer and kind of have a conversation about why the threshold is set there and is there any room to change it? But that tends to be something that an, an employer sets from a, from a comfort point of view, just to make sure that, um, you know, the way that they operate their payroll kind of connects really nicely with WageDream and that they can kind of manage all the flow of funds. Oh, thanks, Emily. Um, and then a question from Hannah, which I know you kind of touched on, but maybe go into a bit more detail, which is, can I change my pay from every four weeks to weekly? So you, can, you can't change your full pay from every four weeks to weekly, but what you could do is you could use wage stream once a week. You could use flexible pay to access all of your available pay in that period and pay, and pay the fee. Um, so if you were paid every four weeks and you wanted to get paid weekly, you could use flexible pay to get a portion of your pay, whether it's 30%, 40%, 50% on a weekly basis. And then each time you did that, there would be a fee to pay depending on who's covering that fee. So um, yeah, so that that would be kind of for you to switch it to weekly. It, it's not it's not wholly weekly because you're not getting your full pay, but you are getting um, for people who like to budget on a weekly basis. They say they're getting enough to pay their bills, buy their food, kind of run their life on a weekly basis. And then at the end of the four week cycle, you usually get kind of a, a, a bigger amount on payday, which often goes towards things like rent. Amazing. Um, next question is, I'm just conscious that it's five o'clock. I'll answer a few more, but if you need to go, don't worry. We'll get sent the recording. But if everyone's got time, we'll answer a few more of these questions because they're really great. Um, which the next one is about the fee. So I, you know you touched on this again. Um, this member would like to know, is the fee monthly? Is it weekly? How does it work with paying the fee for flexible pay? Yeah, so the fee is every time you use it. Um, so every time you use flexible pay, there is a fee um, and what we do as an organization. So we have a fair use fee policy where if somebody was using it every day, for example, we actually stop charging. So we stop charging the fee for people who are using it on a, on a daily basis or a more frequent basis, just so that it limits the total fee available. So after around um, 10 or 11 fees, if you're using it habitually as a, as a replacement for a credit card or as your daily spending mechanism, that fee will stop, stop being charged and then it will reset again the next month. Cool. Thank you. And then this is one that's come up a few different times in sort of different ways, but people are asking about using flexible pay versus using streaming. So I think, could you just clarify the difference or maybe not the difference? Yeah, so flexible pay is the language we use to describe streaming. So streaming is the name of the feature in the app, but flexible pay kind of is what it is. So if you're already using streaming, then, then you are already using flexible pay. They're kind of one and the same. Amazing. Thank you. Um, and then, so this is just, again, something we've already touched on, but how many times can someone access their pay in a month? Uh, so the default is somebody can access their pay as frequently um, as they like, depending on who your employer is. Some employers do have some sort of legacy settings in place that might restrict that access. So you should be able to see how many times you can access it by going to the app and looking at your settings. And again, if you'd like to be able to access it more frequently, it's a very small number of employees who have some employers who have some of those legacy settings in place. So the majority of people should have unlimited access to flexible pay in term, from a frequency point of view. But go have a look at the stream settings in your app and that will kind of show you what your maximums are. And then you'll understand what your, what your maximums are. Okay, 